In this video, we're going to look at our sinusoidal perturbation of the potential to, uh, to examine the emission and absorption of electromagnetic radiation. And so if the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation is long enough, then we can ignore the spatial variation in the field and focus only on the time variation. And the reason for that is if you think of a, a wave of, of electromagnetic radiation, if you have something that looks like this in space, then it's changing pretty rapidly in space. But if you have something that's very long, so that looks like this, then if you just focus in on sort of a small part of it, then there is not very much, there is not very much variation in space. But, you know, these things are moving at the speed of light, and so there's going to be a lot of variation in time. And so the, the, uh, the electric field here, which is the one we're going to be mostly paying attention to because it's uh, a lot stronger than the magnetic field is just the time component here of the electric field multiplied by this cosine function here then in the k direction right there uh, so yeah like i said this is the amplitude of the electric field so we will assume monochromatic light so all light is the same wavelength uh, where the electric field is all polarized in the same z direction so we have our electromagnetic field here where the red here is our electric field the blue is our magnetic field and we are looking at electric field that is polarized in the up and down z direction that way and it's traveling in the y direction and so our perturbed hamiltonian for an electron with charge q will then be this right here so it's the negative of the charge times the amplitude of the electric field in the z direction times this uh this cosine function right here so we then have this right here so this is the uh, the transition here with our our first order uh, Hamiltonian right there which we can put like that and it will be equal to this uh, this Z here so the the uh, these components of the matrix here so multiplied by this negative Q and the the amplitude of the electric field times this cosine function. And so this, uh, this right here is just the polarization uh, of the, the electromagnetic radiation. And so we will set that to this script P here. So we end up getting this right here. So our wave function psi is an odd function, so it has odd parity uh, of z, and so this z times the square of our wave function is odd and integrates to zero, uh, so that's the Laporte's rule, and that's because if it's odd, then if we have our our axis here, so we will have some uh, some positive right there and then some negative right there, so if we integrate all this these will just cancel each other out and so we get zero uh, so that means that the diagonal elements of this are zero this means that the interaction of the electron with electromagnetic radiation is modeled by the sinusoidal perturbation that we discussed in the previous video so our off diagonal elements are equal to this right here all right, so recall from the previous video that the probability of the electron transitioning from state A to state B it was given by this. And so we end up, so when we make the replacement of this uh, V sub B A with this right here, we end up with this. So we do some rearranging to end up with it like this, where we now have this all just squared in parentheses there. And so in absorption, the particle absorbs energy from the electromagnetic field. And so uh, the, the change in energy from B to A, so we're going from a lower energy state A to higher energy state B. And so the amount of energy that it absorbs will be this uh, H bar times the frequency of the 
the electromagnetic radiation that has been absorbed. And so that's why we call this absorption. But the equation that we obtained in the previous video will be the same if we even go in the reverse direction. So you could do the same derivation that we did in the previous video for this. And so now we're going from B to A. And what we actually get is the exact same equation right here uh, for going from A to B here. And so this is called stimulated emission. And so the electromagnetic field gains energy from the electron. And so this is the principle behind lasers, which are light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So we have a bunch of atoms in high energy state, and then we hit them with a photon, which causes emission of two photons. So the emission of the one that it was struck by and the one emitted by stimulated emission, uh, which then strike two more atoms, releasing four photons and so on in a chain reaction. So uh, that is uh, how we use stimulated emission for lasers. Uh, but we also have spontaneous emission, which is just a photon being emitted without the need of another photon uh, being uh, hitting the atom. Uh, but Griffiths points out that these spontaneous emissions are actually stimulated by the zero-point radiation, so the random fluctuations in the electromagnetic field. Uh, but this comes from, uh, from quantum electrodynamics, which is beyond the scope of this sort of introductory quantum mechanics. But he's just pointing out that pretty much all emissions are technically stimulated emissions. Uh, but here we have some pictorial representations of each of these. So we have absorption here where we see the, uh, the electron is going to this higher energy state EB. We have spontaneous emission where it's going down to the lower energy state EA. Then we have a stimulated emission, which uh, we have an electron in in the high energy state EB, uh, it sort of absorbs and then re-emits this photon sort of simultaneously, but then also emits this photon right here to cause the electron to go back down into the lower energy state EA right here. All right, but what we've been looking at so far is coherent light and so that's light where uh, it's all the same wavelength and it's all the same polarization and is all hitting the electron from the same direction but we also want to be able to look at incoherent perturbations and so for this the energy density of the electromagnetic wave so we have an energy density because there are multiple different energies hitting our hitting our electron here. So we have an energy density, which is given by U here, which is equal to this. So it's, uh, it's proportional to the amplitude of our electric field here. And so the square of the amplitude of our electric field here is equal to this, meaning that our emission equation from earlier, uh, so it becomes this, we do, uh, we then replace this right here with our our uh, 2u over this epsilon naught, and so we end up getting this right here. But to get a whole range of frequencies, we then need to integrate over the frequencies of light using the energy density uh, of our electromagnetic wave. And so uh, our u then becomes this, uh, this density that is a function of the different frequencies uh, times this uh, this small change in frequencies here. So we end up with this equation right here, where since we have the peak at our omega sub naught, uh, we can then just make this into a function of this omega sub naught and pull it out of the integral. And so we end up with it right here. So we can do a change of variable. So once again, this thing that we commonly come across where we want to change variable so that we can get things into a form that we actually know uh, solutions for. And so we'll make this change of x is equal to this. 
then our dx is equal to this right here. So we end up getting this right here. Uh, so then here I kind of go through some uh, I kind of go through some justification for why we can change from zero to positive infinity here and get rid of this negative. Uh, so if you want to read through that justification, you can do that. But I'm just going to kind of uh, skip to the punchline here uh, that we end up getting this. We do some rearranging with these red and blue here that we uh, that we ended up getting up here from our substitution. And so we end up with this right here. And so what we see now, this is what we were trying to do is get this integral this, get this integral right here. Uh, and so we end up with, uh, so actually this should be d, dx here. So we made that substitution. So this should actually be dx starting right here. That should be x, that should be x, that should be x, 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 uh, x. And so we end up with that right there. So we have this, uh, this, x right there and so we get it into this form so this integral here that I have in brown is just equal to this pi right here and so we end up getting this right here where we can see that the transition probability is now proportional to time so uh, we no longer have this this Robbie cycle here because uh, remember before in the previous video we had this sinusoidal change and the probability of the emission because it was based on this right here which was our function of time which was proportional to the sine squared of time uh, and so instead the now we have the probability of emission is directly proportional to time so it increases linearly with time right here and in fact if we take the time derivative of it uh, we just lose that. We see that the uh, the probability uh, is uh, constant here. Uh, but in incoherent electromagnetic radiation, it's not just the frequency omega that has uh, multiple values. It is also multiple polarizations and approaching from multiple angles. So this means that we need to average over all the polarizations. And so this polarization here uh, will now set to the uh, polarization uh, with respect to this uh, this n direction here and so we end up with this right here so we're going we have this cosine over all of the theta angles here uh, so that when we integrate over all of these possible angles so we have this integral right here so when we integrate with respect to phi we will just get this 2 pi so that will cancel with this right here so we just have this one half uh, so we uh, are now uh, integrating over this without the phi. So we evaluate the integral. And what we end up with uh, after uh, evaluating this uh, at, zero, at 0 and pi here is we have this 1 third uh, times the, uh, this p squared here, this script p squared here, which is the polarization here. Uh, meaning that the transition rate of stimulated emission from, uh, so going from psi b to psi sub a here under incoherent electromagnetic radiation. Uh, so we are now just putting this in for that right there. And so we get this one third times this uh, this vector here of our polarization. And so when we simplify that, we end up getting this right here, where these are our matrix elements for the electric dipole moment between the two transitions or the two states. Uh, and this uh, rho of omega sub naught here is the energy density of the electromagnetic fields per unit frequency. So it's the energy density of, you know, all the different frequencies of our of our electromagnetic radiation of the incoming photons here. And so this is the transition rate right here for our electron in in incoherent electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and so that is looking at this uh, stimulated emission here.
but anyway, that was what I wanted to discuss in this video. We will look more at spontaneous emission in the next video. Uh, but I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.